Hi folks, welcome to another episode of Joe's Crazy Projects. You can see behind me something big and yellow. You can also see my backhoe. I needed that as a gantry crane. Gonna need it again. I'm going to, uh, as soon as I catch my breath, I've been dismantling that trailer behind me for the past three hours. I'll get into that more when I turn the camera around. But that is the light tower trailer that that Lister goes in, that Lister generator. So I'm going to give you a quick tour of all the bits and pieces and uh, what I've got to go for. This is the crux of the generator. Uh, over there, that's where the engine stroke generator goes and a fuel pump, the electric fuel pump, the battery goes there. That all has to be repaired, the battery. Going to clean all this up, paint it, probably going to paint it white. Take the tires off, clean all that up. Probably not going to do the bearings. Uh, whoever buys it can deal with that. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. But anyway, I've got all the pieces here. These are two of the masts that go upright. One goes inside the other. And the third one is on the ground somewhere. The one that, uh, oh, the big tube here, that's the tilt one. It's upside down so that it lays flat across here for travel and then it cranks up against the front. Well, I've got to fix that crank. The The modification they made for the handle doesn't work, but that's an easy fix. All the wiring has to be replaced. It's so rotted. Uh, then just general cleanup here. These are the big old bulbs and I'm not changing those. If they work, they're going back in. One fender's not too bad, needs just a little bit of body work. The rear panel has a little dent in it, and I'm going to take care of that. But that fender, I'm not going to replace it. I'm going to straighten it as best I can and put it back on. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a work trailer. I'm not going to do much with it. And as I said, there's my backhoe. I use that to lift the cover off. And while I was at it, I noticed the left stabilizer was leaking, so I had to replace that hose. I replaced it with a used hose, but at least the used hose doesn't leak. And this is what I get for three hours worth of work. A whole bunch of parts to deal with. But that's the way it goes. So we'll catch you a little further down another day here. But I'm done for the day. I just thought I'd give you a start. Hi folks, well, I'm not even a couple minutes into my project here, and already you saw me do something you should never ever do. I stood between the boom, main boom, and the stabilizer, which you could, you could get seriously hurt or killed if you end up having the boom swing unintended and it'll crush you between those two but that's the way it is so anyway um, it's over 70 degrees today I'm in my shorts got my sunny hat on so I don't get too sunburnt um, I had this up on wood and uh, 
Well, originally I had, a, I had it on jack stands that I didn't have anything under. So the jack stands dug into the dirt. So I put it up on wood. And then for some reason I was pushing on the side for some reason real hard. Oh, I was cleaning out the channels for the side two side stabilizers and I pushed it right off the wood. So I got my trusty crane out, my <laughs> my all-in-one, and uh, I'm going to block it up now. Getting ready to sand it. I've pressure washed it. Uh, not going to go too crazy on this, but I think I'm going to get some good primer and then some white paint. I'm going to change the color to white, but first I've got to block this up safely. All right, it's back up on blocks or on jack stands and then wooden blocks underneath the axle just in case it decides to slip again. Uh, I'm probably not going to film sanding it. I mean, it's one of those things that's kind of boring. Uh, probably... I might get my orbital sander out. I haven't decided yet. Uh, it's I just have to rough it up enough. I know this looks terrible, but I think just a little bit of sanding that'll cover right up. Yeah, there's some rust on it. I'm gonna have to tape over the the label, the logo. Uh, I've got a little bit of welding to do. This has to go down. That's the battery box. I might show that. That's probably the first thing I should do. So maybe I'll get a clamp. Well, I'll grind that so it doesn't look so bad. It's pretty bad. I bought one of those flat wheels. I think I'll try that. And uh, we'll start. I guess when I get, when I think it's getting boring, I'll shut it off. Flop disc label came off. I think the wasps made a nest in here sometime in the past couple of weeks because they keep flying around. Looks like the wasp's nest is in the trailer hitch. I just saw one fly in there.
think that's it for the flap wheel or flap disc. The uh, seems like they wear out pretty quick. I think what's going to happen is I'm just going to take a some sandpaper and a little block and rough up everything. Uh, probably going to burn through the rust. I might have to cut that off to clean under it. Yeah. All right, I'm going to cut that off. All right, yeah, I know it's a cutoff wheel. Shouldn't be using it for grinding. This would be a perfect time to tell you, this is not a how to do it. This is how I'm doing it. Well, I think I finished that disc off. I'm going for some hornet spray. I think it's time to get rid of those hornets. All right, let's see if we can't get rid of some wasps or hornets. Well, that can's almost empty. Time to break out the welder. All right. Got some 6013 plain old AC stick welder. Ooh. Did not bring out a clamp. Need a clamp. All right, let's see if we get through the rust with that. Now my amperage calibration on this welder is not really accurate, but I can tell you I'm going to run it hot because <laughs> I want to get through the rust and 
everything else. Wow, that piece got hot by itself. You know you're running hot when your rod starts turning black. This is getting too hot. You may think I'm tossing the ends willy-nilly, but they're actually going on my concrete pad where I run my magnet over them all. Pick them up. Well, that's probably good enough, but a saying I used to hear, good enough never is. So we'll put some more on. The end of the welding. So I think now is get some sandpaper, rough it up, uh, chip off those welds. Go get my chipping hammer. And uh, get ready to paint. Uh, I don't know if I covered any of it before, but I pressure washed this. I pressure washed the front and back skins. I pressure washed over here where you can't see. This is the cover. Straighten out a few dents. There's still a dent in the cover where somebody actually used Bondo on it. Uh, that's probably going to come out. I'd, I'd rather just paint it and leave it a little lumpy on the top. Somebody else can pretty it up with Bondo. So that's where we are. So I think the next thing you're going to see is me painting. Because to watch me sand is not pretty. All right, Rust-Oleum Professional Primer. I'm going to spray most of the rust first. I don't know, I may top, copy, cover the whole thing. I don't think there's enough here to cover the whole thing. But I'm going to uh, I have to mask off certain spots when I get to painting, but for priming I shouldn't need to do too much of that. But there are places that I'm a little concerned about, so I'll cover them with cardboard for now.
All right, I think that's enough primer for now. Trying to read. Tries to touch in 10 to 20 minutes. One to two hours, fully in 24. Apply a second coat within one hour or after 48. So, I'll give that a half hour and then I'll try some white paint. Okay, I spent quite some time taping off the fuel tank and the name plate. I'm not going to tape off the generator mounts, the motor generator, engine, I should say, not a motor. <coughs> but I'm going to try to use this to get close. Um, I could remove them all, but... I don't think it's worth it. So now I'm getting ready to paint. Alright, can two. Almost got it done. Just a little on the inside. Now to let it dry, I gotta put the back hole away. It's gonna be raining tomorrow morning. So that's that. This ought to be fun, sped up. I'm gonna probably speed this up like eight times. Good afternoon, or good day. As you can see, everything is greened up around here. And that is because we're doing a little update. I started working on this back in April. And it is now July 8th. So since I did everything off camera and that was somewhat intentional it was a little boring but I will catch you up on everything up to this point we're getting close to putting it back together so you saw this all stripped down with all the the front and the back off of it and everything taken out so now here we are We've started reassembling. The fenders are put back on. This one had a couple little kinks in it. The back had a couple little kinks. And I got rid of most of them. But this is not meant to be a real good body job. This fender is the one that was folded up in half right in here. And it, yeah, it's not going to win any beauty contest but it looks pretty much like a fender which is what it needed to do in here 
This piece in here, which goes inside this tube, this is an extension. Same on the other side. Those are rusted in so bad I had to take a sledgehammer to drive those out because they're supposed to swing way out from here. Probably they come out four feet for stabilizers. The jacks themselves were all frozen up. I had to take them all apart, rebuild the insides on those. Inside here, I had to take this guy all apart and he's got a clutch slash brake mechanism built into it. So when you crank, it tightens up a, a, a felt pad in here so that you can crank it forward. And then it latches. That's what these teeth are for. There's a little spring lever inside so that it will only come down as much as you release the handle because the minute you stop, that felt washer binds up again. So that all was frozen up, that had to be fixed. This box behind here, underneath here is, a, is where the components are for the, uh, I think there's sodium lights, there's transformers and capacitors in there. That was, I took that all apart painted that, cleaned it up, put a new piece of tubing in here with new wiring because that was all broken up. What else on here? The back circuit breaker panel. I cleaned this all up. This is all nice and clean now, new labels. Generators put in here. So all that wiring is done up to there, up to that HID box, and it's probably going to have some water in it, but that's okay. I mean, it is what it is. And then I took this guy, this pin was all frozen, so I had to drill this out. I had to get rid of this. This is a uh, roll pin or spring pin, they call it, used as a handle. That's all taken care of. I had to redo this cable coming in here. There's another crank that goes on here. Comes up to a pulley that's now on order to take some pulls the second part of the mast out to get up to 21 feet. And so this is all painted. The electrical wire that was in here is gone. I took that out. That has to be replaced. So we're getting there. It's uh, it's getting really close. A few little odds and ends here and there I have to do, which is fine. But uh, this has been a project. As I said, here it is May. This is the top mast here. All painted. I'm going to give that a couple days to dry put that in and then on this end is where these lights go so that'll be probably my last almost my last paint job I got to take the tongue out clean that up get that working right check the lights take this off and clean this up and get that working right find Find his jack stand for the back, get that set up and working, finish cabling and wiring the mast. And oh, I'm waiting for a fuel pump, and I don't know about the lights. I'm, oh, and I have to do the cover. So that's where we are today, and it is way too hot. A hurricane. Barrel, 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 just hit Texas this morning. And up here in New England, it is toasty, as is a lot of the country. So I did a little work this morning, got this painted. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll go from there. You can see these wires are all just rotted. So I gotta replace those, replace the outlets. Uh, I might be able to save this 
spring-loaded wire. That actually looks halfway decent. So that's where we are. And uh, lots of work. I'm going to show you the other um, crank inside. I had to rebuild that one also. So let's go inside and look. So this here is pretty much is the same as the one that's outside that brings the tilt up. The only difference is instead of a handle on that one, there's an extension going outside the frame. But this is, this is if you are tightening, either raising the mast, which this one does, or tilting everything up, which is the one in the vehicle now. And it just moves along because this is threaded into here and everything is moving. And it can't go backwards because that little paw on the bottom, that's that click, click, click in this tooth. And once it's there, see it, this, this unthreads here, but only so far. And the only way to get this to turn backwards is to unthread this slightly. So it can only go as far as you let it go. Because if I do this, then of course it's going to go quite a ways. So it's kind of a one-way system. Um, it only goes backwards if you allow it to. Um, but this one also had to be rebuilt. The paw was in the wrong spot. This was all frozen in here. And I think the people that were using it just didn't care. Uh, the handle was all bent. The handle was all screwed up. So that's what we've got. That's, that's where we are. Um, a lot of behind-the-scenes efforts at this point. Um, one of the shafts on those jacks, I actually had to put in the lathe and make a custom high-speed steel uh, tool, piece of tooling to clean out the threads so that it actually worked. It had so much rust built in it. Uh, the other one I had to rebuild by going to the local junkyard and getting another one. And between the two I was able to make one good one. So that's where we are as of today. And I'm waiting for the fuel pump and some a little bit cooler weather. Maybe I'll work an hour or two in the mornings now. Well, it's done. Finally. Boy, this was a project and a half. Took way, way, way longer than I wanted to. And I just hope it was all worth it and that it runs more than five minutes. The, uh, everything is in place. I had to make up a custom exhaust for it. I think the original exhaust went up through the top right there but that had problems with water infiltration so I made up something to go down this way and out put a couple hangers on it I think it'll be really fine put a new ground rod on it Brass ground rod, ground the end. So it should be all set. Um, I'll crank it up and uh, and then power up the engine. I'm, I'll put the lights up in a minute. The lights have to be unbolted here to be turned. Because I think you're supposed to have the lights, although I guess I can just turn them. I can leave it bolted for now. Um, this is the transport mode with this here. And then if you take these two arms and swing them out, then they bolt through here to each other to make a long, long T on the top. So... 
yeah, yeah. Had a troubleshoot and rebuild that. Rebuild that. Put a new fuel pump on. Put a connecting rod bearing in that. Rebuilt that box. Well, rebuilt it. Cleaned it all up. Put a new piece of uh, flex inside. Then put a new piece of cable going outside. You can just barely see it there. Rebuilt that winch. Fix that, painted everything, rebuilt these stands, and uh, I think what I'm going to do is stop here and get it all set up, and I have to take some pictures to sell it. All right, fully deployed. See the stabilizers on the side, the one on the back, the one on the other side, and. 20 feet up. So now we'll try to start this baby. Let's see what happens. I gotta hook up the battery. Well, that's not a good sign. Diesel fuel should be on. Well, you know what? Maybe I should richen it a little. Hmm. I don't have a fuel pump. I have to see what's going on. This was supposed to be the triumphant end of a series of videos on rebuilding what's in front of me and underneath you as my light tower trailer. Almond, A-L-L-M-A-N-D. 1800 Sundowner, uh, circa 1986, I think. I bought it. It had lots of problems, as you'll see in the previous videos and earlier in this video. I got it all back together. I had the engine running, the generator generating, the lights were plugged into the house power, everything was working, the tower goes up and down, the jacks all work, I painted everything. And then I actually tried to run the lights on the generator that's powered by a Lister LT1. And it seemed to go okay until they want, went to full intensity and drew a little too much current. And the engine bogged down. And it does not want to run those two lights. It'll run one light fine. It won't run two lights. I believe it's a fuel delivery problem, but it's a diesel. It's a one-cylinder diesel. It's a British one-cylinder diesel, none of which I am familiar with. Yeah, I could probably put another 10 or 20 hours into the engine, play with the governor, play with the fuel pump, play with the pressures, play with the timing. I'm just not going to do that. So basically, my resurrection is a bust. I get this really pretty light tower <laughs> that doesn't work. Uh, and it's been long enough that I'm looking at it here. Some of my hardware is actually starting to rust again. So even though I made it look really pretty, now it's not, not so much. But that's okay. Uh, it is what it is. Fortunately, what I'm going to do in one more, hopefully short video, is to pull this Lister generator, Lister engine and generator out. And I have a couple of 4,000, this is about 2,500 or 2,700 watts. I have a couple of Onan, I believe they are Onan 4,500 watt RV generators. Now the gasoline, this was diesel. 
but they're just sitting here doing nothing. Um, one of them is 110 volt only, which is perfect for this application. I'm going to yank out the Lister. I'm going to put the Onan in. I think I will make one more video about that so you can actually see the light tower working. So thanks for sticking it out so far. Hope you stick it out for, huh, I think it's episode number five. <laughs> but uh, that's it. I, I'm not, I'm not going to show you anything else. Uh, this video is pretty long already. And uh, hope you stick around. Like, dislike, comment, share, subscribe, whatever. Uh, doesn't matter to me. I'm doing this for documentation and hopefully to help somebody else with some of these unique projects. So you guys have a good day and thanks for watching.